and change is coming by your spirit. It's a new season of revealing your word is true and you will never Changes coming by your spirit. It's a new season of revealing his word is true, and you will never ever fail. Your presence will lead us, always providing in the desert, and filling our souls with living water.
confidence oh he's never failed me yet he's never failed me yet he's never failed me Oh, he's never failed me yet. My heart, my heart and my soul confess God is my confidence. He's never failed me yet. Good morning everyone and welcome to Every Nation Church at Home here in Edmonton for our weekly worship service. So today we are premiering, we are pre-recording all these so that we can air it broadcast earlier so you, uh, you get to worship with us if you live in Edmonton because later on this day at 11 a.m. will be the church at the park. And so, uh, yeah, we celebrate our Mission Sunday. And um, just for a few announcements, next week will be the 4th of July on next Sunday. So don't forget that um, it's going to be our Communion Sunday next week. And the week following that, um, on July 6, 7, and 8, will be our mid-year consecration, our corporate prayer and fasting together with some of our every nation family especially in the philippines and uh, worldwide we're doing this uh, january we do it five days and uh, mid-year for three days our consecration week will be uh, on july 6 7 and 8 so please uh, visit our uh, website and uh, the announcements so we're we're sending you personal announcements for um our uh, prayer and fasting booklet and uh, we'll be doing uh, devotionals we'll be doing corporate prayers every evening of that of those days july 6 7 and 8 and on the 11th of july will be our uh, second church at the park and uh, we'll also be doing it at william harlock park picnic site 3 so today it's going to be at picnic site 2 but next, uh, uh, Church at the Park on the 11th will be at the picnic site 3. It will be perfect for our uh, family members who have were raising kids, uh, for young families, because that picnic site, picnic site 3, is just next uh, to a playground. And so the picnic site 2 today, for today, is just so close. It's like a, a hub for uh, uh, different trails. It's next to the... To the River too, so please uh, don't forget uh, to bring your uh, lawn chairs. And it's gonna be hot today and this coming week. I saw in the news it's gonna be record the high. It's gonna be a record breaker. I'm not excited for that. Although I lived in the Philippines, I was born and raised there, and lived in uh, the Middle East for seven and a half years. <laughs> That's not an exciting week coming this week. Uh, it's going to be hot, so please uh, be careful and uh, prepare well. And uh, for church at the park, don't forget your cool drinks to cool you down too. All right, so um, also uh, July 30th, 31st, and August 1 will be our uh, first church camp. So we'll be at Mikalon Lake, and I know a lot of you, long time ago you booked in your your uh, uh, camping site so yeah we'll see you all there and the Sunday after that weekend on the Aug uh, 8th of August um, we'll again be at picnic site 3 for our church at the park for that month of August even as we transition into a meeting in person indoors because um, Stage 3 is coming for the opening, reopening of the 
the economy of Alberta on July 1st, um, things are, uh, uh, are, are going to be lifted. So, yeah, we're excited for that. All right. Um, so, would you join me as we uh, worship God this morning through our singing and then later on through our giving? And then the last part, as I introduce to you our, our speaker for the day, I'll not be preaching for today, but Pastor Robert Hearn uh, will be preaching to us as we worship God through hearing His Word preached. Would you join me as we dedicate this time to the Lord in prayer? Father, we thank You, for You are a faithful God. Thank You for Your faithfulness. Thank You for Your goodness, God. Although Lord, um, it's a hot summer here in, in this part of the world right now. We thank you, God, that through it all, you are at work for the good of those who love you. And thank you, God, that this day is a new beginning, a day of new beginnings, God. And we can be excited and we can be thankful for a lot of things. It's like all things that are passing and the new things that are coming and god just like the song says our heart and our soul confess that you are our confidence that you never fail you never failed us yet and you don't intend to start doing it god because we know who you are you're the faithful god faithful promise keeper and we are confident and we're covered by the power of your great love your love that never gives up your love that never fails and thank you for this time God this time of worship we commit to you our hearts we lay down every burden every cares God every problem anything that would hinder us from coming to you we lay them all down we lift your hearts we lift your hands we worship you and thank you for embracing us and welcoming us into your heart into your presence today in Jesus name let's all worship together
gives up never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up never runs out on me your love your the God of promise and every word will be accomplished nothing can stop it the gates of hell will never never even stand a chance you truly are the God of promise thank you for being who you are because of who you are we know who we are and we know that you're with us 
a God of promise. So we throw off our chains, our burdens, because your word says it is finished. You've dealt with all these, Lord Jesus. You won a victory for us. You rose from the grave. You truly are the God of promise. We thank you for this time that we can come to you and we can cast all our cares to the God who cares for us, the God who loves us. Thank you so much, God, for this time of worship. In your name, our Lord, we all say amen and amen. All right, even as we transition from worshiping through singing, let's now proceed to this time of our ser service where, we're, where we worship God through our giving. So let's, uh, let's all welcome uh, Ro to encourage us. Good morning everyone, my name is Ro and welcome to our online worship service. We've come to a part of our service where we worship God through our giving. Let me take you to John 12 verse 3. It says here, Mary picked up an alabaster jar filled with nearly a liter of extremely rare and costly perfume, the purest extract of Nord, and she anointed Jesus' feet. Then she wiped them dry with her long hair and the fragrance of the costly, filled, of the costly oil filled the house. So there are things that we can see here. First is the cost of the perfume, which is, they said that a yearly, nearly a year's salary of an individual. So it's very expensive. Second, Mary's expression of love is over the top. What she did is worship. Worship is an act of love and surrender. She gave the most expensive thing that she has because Jesus is worthy. So how can we relate to that? on these days of our lives. My question is, what is the most expensive thing that you have right now? You know, how we handle our money, our resources, or whatever it is that God had entrusted to us will always reveal our priorities, our affection, our loyalties, and passion in life. How we handle it always determines what's inside our hearts. You know, we can't really comprehend what could be the worth of giving that will bless the Lord. But if we give everything with love, then that is an extravagant worship. Because God first, God looks in the heart when we worship and when we give or when we trust God through our giving or when we worship Him through our giving. You know, in that verse as well, if we will read like the verses after that you will see that Judas said that we could in Tagalog it says sayang that we could like sell it the oil or the perfume and just give the money to the poor but you know it is because people see the cost but God sees the value of what we do for him Jesus said that she did a beautiful thing to me it really honors the Lord when His people give Him an extravagant worship. Let us pray. Father, as we give today, check our hearts and help us to trust You as we give. We wanted to worship You and we wanted to give the best to You today as we give. May You be glorified, Lord. We love You. In Jesus' name, Amen. There are two ways to give. First, um, you can mail a check and send it to 7608 24 Avenue Southwest T6S1S6 or through the website www.everynationedmonton.ca slash give. Thank you. Now. Thank you so much, uh, bro, for that uh, wonderful encouragement. And so we worship God through our singing. We worship God through our giving. And now uh, let's proceed on worshiping God through hearing uh, His message preached to us, His word preached to us on 
Uh, this Sunday, our celebration of Mission Sunday, and uh, we're grateful for Pastor Robert for gracing us online and putting this uh, sermon, this uh, message together. And uh, his, his crew, <laughs> their family, uh, his wife, Jen, and uh, his two daughters, um, Bethia and Shanice, they, they, they work together. You know, they're a team. Uh, just like our family here, um, recording all these things and, and uh, live streaming from our home to your, own, to your home. Uh, they're doing it not just for the two churches in, in South California. They've been doing it for uh, churches, not just also here in North America. And uh, I, I'm really thankful for Pastor Robert, for the friendship, for the collaboration. You know, every week we sit together with Pastor Marlo in uh, East Calgary and Pastor um, Prime in Winnipeg. And uh, yeah, we've been doing this um, series together and I'm excited for you uh, to hear the message uh, he's gonna preach to us this Sunday uh, as we celebrate Mission Sunday. So let's all please get uh, our Bibles ready, our notebooks and pens, uh, I know maybe you're using technology uh, to write down your notes. So let uh, our, our, all these things, instruments ready, but most importantly, our hearts ready to receive God's word for us for the day. Let's all welcome Pastor Robert. Thank you for the honor and the privilege of sharing God's Word with you today. Um, as you may know, we are all going through this uh, book study, the book of Joshua, and uh, taking hold of God's promises. And I wanted to thank your pastor for giving me the, um, the privilege of um, sharing this Sunday and also as we celebrate together Mission Sunday. And what the verse that comes to mind is Psalm 133, of course, that behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers or brethren dwell together in unity. Such an honor, and I want to take this uh, opportunity to thank your pastor for this um, uh, uh, privilege of sharing the word of the Lord with you this day. So can we start this with a word of prayer? Join me in a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for the opportunity, Lord God, to uh, come and listen to your word. I pray, God, that you would speak to us. I pray that you would open your word, remove any hindrances for us, Lord, not to understand your word. Illuminate your word, Lord, for us to understand. Thank you, Lord, for this time. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let me just give you a quick context of what we're going through. Of course, we're going to start in Joshua chapter 5, the latter part, and also Joshua chapter 6. We're going to be reading a very familiar story for most of us, but yet mm, a very powerful story. And there's a powerful message that we need to understand. And that is, of course, the walls of Jericho. And you've heard about that. And uh, let me just share this. So now we could see that there's that preparation before the conquest of the land. The Lord had spoken to the nation of Israel several things that they must do, instructions, remembrance that needs to happen. But yet at this particular moment, it's very interesting is because what we're going to see is that in chapter 6, that God is preparing them for a battle. But yet this is no ordinary battle. Because let me tell you about Jericho. You may not know, so we're going to put this on the screen. Jericho is, um, it's called a, a city of palm trees. It is a beautiful city in the middle of the desert. There's a spring near the city. And of course, uh, this, it has a perfect weather. And it's like here in San Diego, pretty much, when I study about Jericho, it reminds me of San Diego. Sunny, but not too hot not too cold and uh, i know you are craving for that if you are from canada of course but yeah, this is jericho and here's what stands out about or what stood out when you look at jericho in in this uh, in this text that it is a uh, unconquerable city 
a walled city, impregnable, difficult to conquer. And yet, as you follow the story, you would see that this is the same place, all right? The first place, the first city that God wanted the Israelites to conquer. It's interesting because as you can see in the picture, it is about an eight, uh, eight acre city surrounded by two walls. Um, excavation, actually, if you want to Google that, you would see that it is exists. And there's several, I think four or five excavation, excavation that already took place. What you can see is that there is about two walls in there. That's the other one that I would put there on the screen for you. There's that lower city wall that's about between uh, 11 to 14 feet high. But yet there's an embankment or this, that uh, separation in the middle, about a 35 degree slope. And there's, there's another wall. As you can see, the, 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 the figure of men at the bottom, this is how they would see the wall of Jericho. This is an impossible task. This is an you know, unconquerable city, but yet God asked them on their first battle to conquer the most difficult city to conquer. This is like, you know, of course, basketball playoffs is going on. It's like it's your rookie year, and in your first playoff, you're what? You're against the champion, and this is difficult. But yet at the end, what we will see is that Yes, let me just give you a spoiler here, that they have won the battle. They have won. They were victorious at the end of Joshua chapter 6. And what is the message here as we look at this text? There is one text, uh, one message that I'm going to repeat all throughout. And this is the message as I read Joshua chapter 5 at the very end of the Joshua chapter 6. And let me put this on the screen for you. It is not our strategy or ability, but it is God who gives us the victory. Come on, say it with me as you're reading on the screen. It is not our strategy or ability, but it is God who gives us the victory. Yes, they, have, they conquered the most difficult city to conquer, the unconquerable, impregnable city they conquered because God gave them the victory. So if that's the case, then the question should be asked is this. How did God give this victory to them? What was the event that took place for them to be able to conquer the most difficult city to conquer? And I think as I re reflect that, let me ask you this question. What would be your Jericho today as you listen to this message? An impregnable, an unconquerable situation in your life. But yet... Let me encourage you with this. It is not your strategy or nor your human ability that you'll be able to conquer whatever Jericho-like situations you have because it is God who's going to give you the victory. But how? Let me share to you two questions that we're going to answer as we repeat this statement so that it would resonate in your heart as we end this, you know, as, we, as I preach this message. And here's the question that I wanted to ask you first, okay? If God is going to give us the victory, question number one, as we look at the story, is this, whose side are you on? Whose side are you on? Let's read this in Joshua chapter 5. It is very clear that after they have done the circumcision at Gilgal, they have celebrated the Passover, here's what happened in verse 13. Now, when Jericho... Now, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, are you for us or for our enemies? Interesting because God, uh, Joshua somehow, this is what we could see here is this is a supernatural uh, uh, occurrence. He saw someone with a drawn sword. There are through a uh, school of thought, some uh, theologian would say that this is um, angel Michael with a drawn sword ready, you know, to uh, lead the nation of Israel, but yet also there's a school of thought that says that this is a theophany or specifically a Christophany, which is the appearance of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. For me, I would, uh, I would subscribe to the uh, latter, the latter part, which is this is a Christophany. Because as we could see, Joshua saw this man, he approached this man. So he recognizes most probably that, you know, that he is not... An enemy because he's not wearing the uniform or the battle gear of the enemy, but yet he approached this man. So in verse uh, 14, here's what happens. 
And he asked this question in 13, are you for us or for our enemies? What an interesting question. But yet, the commander of the Lord's army didn't answer that. I think there's a, the question here is not whether if the commander of the Lord's army is in Joshua's side. Actually, the question is this. It's not if God was in Joshua's side, but the question here is, is Joshua on God's side? Whose side are you on? Look at this. Neither, he replied. But as the commander of the Lord, army of the Lord, I have come. I have now come. Look at the, uh, uh, the, the, the posture of Joshua. And this encounter, then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him. He submitted himself before the Lord because he recognized who is he, who is he with. His question is, are you for me? No. God says, no, 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 no. That's a wrong question. I'm not, I, you're not asking me if I am in your side. It's the, the most important question. Are you on my side? Are we on God's side? If God is going to give us the victory, you have to make sure that you are on God's side. Because most of the time, when we fight our Jerichos, when we wanted to what? Go and fight the most difficult things or we're facing in lives is that sometimes we are inviting God to be on our side. Instead of us praying and making sure that we are on God's side. Because it's not my, by might nor power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. He what? He fell face down. He knelt before the Lord because battles are won on our knees. That's the beginning. Before the actual battle took place, Joshua here is winning the battle, which is your submission before the Lord. He's Falling down means that I'm submitting and I'm declaring that I am on your side. It's interesting because when you look at this, this is the commander of the Lord's army and the commander of the Israelites' army. But yet, Joshua knows who's in charge. You are in charge. I am not in charge. I think for most of us, that's very important, isn't it? That we understand that he is in charge. If he is in charge, so we better be on his side. What message that, that my Lord have for his servant? My Lord, Adonai, I am your servant. Look at this. The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals for the place where you're standing is holy. And look at Joshua's response. And Joshua did so. Interesting because that's the same thing that happened when Moses encountered God in a burning bush. Take up your sandals. The holiness of God. The proclamation that you are standing now on a holy ground. You are now standing on my side. And what did Joshua do? He fell fast down. He followed the instructions. Interesting. You know why? Whose side are you on? As you face this Jericho, whose side are you on? You know why that is important? Because when you choose that side, then it is not our strategy or ability. It is God who gives us the victory. The most important message before the battle is this. Take off your sandals for the place that you're standing is holy. That means you better follow what I tell you to do. You better be on my, on my side before we go to battle. Wow, what a message, isn't it? And now we move on to Joshua chapter 6. And here's the question. After answering that question, whose side are you on? Here's the next question that you should uh, contemplate and, and answer. And here's the question. Will you obey God no matter what? If God is going to give you the victory, it is important that we obey Him no matter how difficult, no matter how challenging, no matter our, how unorthodox is the instructions. We must obey. Look at this in verse 1. Joshua was, uh, now Jericho was tightly shut up because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. As you can see, this is very interesting because it made the, the, the battle more difficult because the doors are closed, the gates are closed rather. That means it's going to be more impossible and difficult for them to conquer Jericho. Look at verse 2. Then the Lord said to Joshua, I love this moment in verse 2 as we could see this and, and, and track with me now. So Joshua was there 
you know, in verse one, as you could see, uh, now Jericho, Joshua could see Jericho. And then the Lord spoke to him and said, see, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. But you have to be kidding me because I have delivered Jericho, but yet it is tightly shut. So what Joshua was saying actually was, it's going to be difficult. But yet God said, no, 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 no. It's already done deal. The battle has already been what? It's already been won at that moment because God says, I have delivered you, Jericho. That means it's finished. It's done. What Joshua needs to do now is to follow and obey God's instruction. If he's going to go appropriate the victory that God has already given him. So that's why we look at this in verse 3. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Ha. March around the city. Here's the strategy. Ha. Unorthodox. Difficult. <laughs> Never seen before. A difficult military strategy. Joshua was a commander. He had been in many battles. But yet the instruction is this. See, I have delivered Jericho. That unconquerable city. That a difficult city. It's going to be yours. It's yours. It's already been, what? Declared. But yet, look at the structure. March around the city. Once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. And I'm just wondering what Joshua is thinking about this at this particular moment. March around the city? So this is difficult. And you're like, Lord, you have to understand. When you look at the map that I shown you, it would take them at least because it's an eight acre, you know, uh, uh, area, it would take them about 30 minutes to march around the city. 30 minutes. So imagine that. Once for every, what? Once, uh, for six days once, and on the seventh day he said that you should march them uh, on the seventh day uh, seven times. But yet, here's what it is. March around and look at the next one in verse 4. Here's the message. Have seven priests carry trumpets of Brahms horn in the front of the ark, and on the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. I mean, march around the city for, you know, once for six days and seven, time, seven times on the seventh day. This is difficult. I mean, imagine they were just moving around, marching around that city. You know, they would wake up the next day and, all right, we're going to march. Once again, here, they're going to lead the trumpets. I think in Numbers chapter 10, verse 10, this is called the Jubilee trumpet. If this is uh, the pronouncement of the presence of the Lord. I mean, the whole thing is this. I'm going to lead the battle. That means my presence as they sound that trumpet. But yet every day, here's some four things that you need to understand. As they circle around Jericho for seven days, seven times on the seventh, once for those six days. 30 minutes as they march around. They would wake up every day. Guess what's going to happen? So they wake up. This is what? <laughs> it take what? It would take what? It takes courage to do that. To follow and obey. An orthodox military strategy never seen before. You're going to march around. The first day they would make up, wake up. It took courage because they could have been what? Killed at that moment. Uh, Archers from Jericho the troops shot some arrows and killed them. So they march around in courage. Also, it took perseverance from them. That means every day, we're going to wake up again. We're going to march to Jericho. <sighs> and then after that, of course, it took patience. Because here, when the instructions in verse 5 says, When you hear the sound, a long blast on trumpets, have all the people give a loud shout. A loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the people will go up. Every man straight in. You cannot make a sound only on the seventh day. On the seventh time, they hear the trumpet sound. They would shout. So, patience. You cannot make any sound. I don't know if I could really last, to be honest. Some of us who's like me who loves to talk. Oh, that's difficult. That's difficult. Courage, perseverance, patience. And also, here's the last one. It also, it teaches them really and exposes that this should really depend on God. 
It's all about total dependence on God. Because as they march around that city, they would see the wall, the unconquerable wall. And here's what they would realize. This is impossible to conquer. It is indeed impossible to conquer. Because again, it is not our ability, nor our strategy, but it is God who gives us the victory. Maybe that's you are in right now. God is asking you to obey something that is <laughs> takes your perseverance. Some of you, you've been obeying and you're not looking and you're looking and nothing is happening. Courage for some because a decision to follow the Lord, sometimes your faith is going to be challenged. People are going to look at you. People are going to watch you. Or sometimes it takes patience. Some of you, you've been waiting. You've been going around your Jericho. But yet, it's not yet the seventh day. Just be patient. But here's, here's what happened on the seventh. And let's jump to verse 15 as we uh, look at this story. It says, on the seventh day, they got up at the daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except that on that day, they circled the city seven times. Verse 16, the seventh time around when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the people, come on, say it with me, shout for the Lord has given you the city. Imagine the moment. They've been holding on for this, holding their breath. They were tired on the seventh day. This is seven times, 30 minutes each. They've been going around this for three and a half hours at least. And at that moment, when they shouted, the walls come tumbling down. Let me encourage you, for some of you who are here today, choose which side are you on. Choose which side. And also, will you obey God no matter what the cost? Because when we do, then we do our sound of what? faith, a sound of victory, then whatever Jericho wall, that you're facing, you know, it will come tumbling down. Why? Let me just say this again, because it is not our strategy or ability, for it is God who gives us the victory. It is God. It's never about how good we are, but how good He is. It's never about how cunning we are, but it is really His ways, not our ways. But yet, when He asks us to obey and maybe to follow him and things like it's so, you know, <laughs> unorthodox. And somehow you're asking, Lord, why? But yet, can we obey the Lord? Because when we do, for some of you, you've been holding, you've been silent for too long. And let's all shout. And what? Let the sound of faith resound. Let people hear our testimony. Let the enemy hear who we serve. And as we shout, the shout of faith. Let all those walls come tumbling down. Let me ask you this. What is your Jericho wall? Maybe your Jericho wall is your marriage. You look at your marriage and like, Lord, it's been difficult. It's been challenging. Listen to the Lord. Whose side are you on? And also, will you obey? Because it is not your strategy, nor ability, but it is God who's going to give you the victory. What is your Jericho What is it your son, your daughter that you've been praying for? Be patient. But let our faith resound. How do we do that? We pray to the Lord. We come to Him. We declare and claim the victory that has already been given to us through Christ because you're ready won the battle for us at the cross 2,000 years ago. What is your Jericho wall? And is a job that you're looking for, is some relationship that needs to be restored? Remember, it is not our strategy or ability, but it is God who gives us the victory. It is God. It's never about them. It's always been about God. You know, while God was leading the ark and the priest, Remember when they enter Jordan River, who led the procession? It was God. When the priest touched the, the Jordan River water, and then it stops flowing from the other side. And they cross on the dry ground. It was God from 
the very beginning. It was him. Shout for the Lord has given us the victory. So as we celebrate Mission Sunday today, it's interesting because when you look at the story, yes, this is about the conquering of Jericho, but yet there is one promise here that's also being fulfilled. It's not on the screen because I want you to open your Bible. So when you read the story here, it's very interesting because at this particular story in verse 22, it says in chapter 6, verse 22, Joshua said to the two men who had cried out, the land, spied out the land, go into the prostitute's house and bring her out and to all who belong to her in accordance with your oath to her. So the young men had done the spying, and then the spying went in and brought out Rahab, his father and mother and brothers and all, all who belonged to her. They brought out the entire family and put them in a place outside the camp of Israel. I mean, you know, this in the midst of the greatest battle, you know, the heart of God and the story also speaks about the salvation of people. The salvation of people. I think that is the very heart of God. The heart of God is for the nations to come to know Him. And I believe this is the story. As we look at also in this missional application of this, in our desire to fulfill the great commandments, is that the nations. Mission Sunday is about that. It's not our strategy nor ability, but it is God who would give us the victory as we go through the nations. You are, if you're watching, in Canada, in U.S., God have brought you there for a purpose. You are a missionary, if you would believe it or not. God have placed you there. We're like Rahab's that God have placed with a dark past, but yet God could use for his glory and honor. As we celebrate Mission Sunday and your pastor is going to go up and, you know, give you instructions and how to respond. But yet there are three things that I wanted to mention here. Number one is that we should pray. Pray that the nations have, and I would encourage you to do this as I encourage my church here in, um, in Saudi California that have a nation in your heart. Pray for a nation. Maybe in your family or maybe you're single. Ask God for a nation to pray. Pray for the nations. We need to pray for the nations. And number two is that we should not only pray, but some of us, we will go to the nations. Some in the full-time capacity as missionaries. And some of us, like me, have been sent here as a full-time capacity, like your pastors being there in Canada, the full-time capacity. But for some, you've been sent there not in full-time missionaries, but you are because you left the Philippines or other nations to be in Canada. You will go. And some of you are already there. And here's the last one that we should also give. We do this every year in our church in SoCal. And let me encourage you to do this as well. It is one, I would say, top three, top offerings we collect every Mission Sunday, and every money we give to the missionaries that are serving, missionaries that have said yes to the Lord, to spread the gospel, to spread the message of God to the people that are lost. And let me encourage you to do the same. Amen? So let me go back as we reflect on this personally, and also as we look at this as we celebrate Mission Sunday, there is that Jericho wall. What is that for you? Check this. Whose side are you on? Are you just doing this in your ability to fulfill, to conquer, whatever that impregnable, unconquerable wall? Or at this time you're going to say, God, I'm going to be on your side. And also, Lord, I'm going to listen to your instruction because I want to obey. Because it's not our strategy or ability, but it is because it is you, Lord, who's going to give me the victory. And now as we celebrate Mission Sunday, as we go to the nations and preach the gospel, as God called us to make disciples of all nations, it is also not our ability or strategy. It is Him who is going to give us the victory. Amen? Please join me in a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for your word today. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you, Lord, for ministering to our hearts. 
Lord, I pray for those people who are watching whatever Jericho wall that they are facing right now. I pray, God, that they would trust you. I pray, God, that they would make sure that the start of any battle is like Joshua, falling down on our knees and acknowledging who you are and acknowledging, Lord, that we are on your side. We want to be on your side. We don't want to do things anymore on our own. And also, Lord, as we go out and fulfill the Great Commission, Lord, thank you, God, for us. You have given us so much. You have given us so much. Some of us will pray and encourage everyone to pray, Lord, for the nations. And some of us will go, and some of us already are in the nations, Lord. And also, Lord, some of us, we will give. We will give so that people could go. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Lord. Bless each and every one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone, and God bless you. Thank you so much, Pastor Robert, for that wonderful message. And please allow me to echo that question that Pastor Robert asked us earlier. What is your Jericho wall today? Um, maybe to some of us, it's, it's discouragement. I know it's sunny, it's bright, but um, it can be as simple as not having air conditioning in your home. You know, it's kind of odd because uh, we live in, in Alberta. Uh, most of us, I know some of you are joining us from outside of Edmonton. And uh, some of you can't relate on <laughs> the heat dome. I saw it on the news. It's what they say. It's the heat dome. Maybe you're just this. You're just discouraged. Maybe it's not the air conditioning or the weather. Um, actually, I'm thankful for the sun. The the full the the the, the longest days are these weeks. The longest days uh, throughout the year, they are in these weeks. Like the sunset is um, around 10.06 at night. I think it's beautiful. So I don't know what you're dealing with. Maybe other sources of discouragements, maybe in your relationships, or maybe it's just it's just lack, you know, uh, all these things that this pandemic has brought about and somehow maybe you're in lack right now in not just financially you know it's it's the summer and you know that you can't afford all the things you want to do this summer uh, you wanted to travel it's not just because the the you know, this um, travel ban is not totally lifted yet, but you need the money to book the flight, right? Even if just a long drive, you need money to buy gas to, to uh, fill your tanks. And if you want to go camping, you need equipment. If you want to go cycling, you need, you need a bike. I don't know. Maybe it's just some sort of discouragement due to lack, or maybe it's due to loneliness. Simply, it's, you know, we're getting outside of that tunnel and we can see the light, you know, it's just right before us, but somehow there's this discouragement, this struggle of being alone. Maybe to some, it's it's that discouragement, that sadness, that sorrow. That's that's because of a loss. Maybe a loved one that you just recently lost, and um, you're dealing with that. So, which? category do you fall uh, what is your Jericho wall today 
you know, we want to give it all to God. Because that Jericho wall, it's just thick and tall and tough and it's impossible. It's, we cannot scale that wall by our own because it's not our ability. It's not our strategy. But it is God who gives us the victory because He's the one. You know, when we shout, even our shout is not because we can shout out loud it's like the Israelites. But even that shout is a shout of victory. Hey, come on, Jerry. How can I shout the shout of victory when it's not there yet? I know, right? It's counterintuitive. It's like how Pastor Robert just put it so plainly and so clearly. But it's a shout of victory. We can thank God for the victory that He has for us. We can do that in advance. You know, and that's simply faith. Our complete trust. Knowing who we are. Because we know who He is. Having this intimate relationship with the God who gives us victory. So what is God speaking to you through this message? We can respond the way Pastor Robert um, encouraged us. We can pray and give it all to God. Even um, in this Mission Sunday, that's what we can do. We can pray. We can all do this. What does it take for us to pray and come to God? He loves to have us talk to Him, chat with Him, hang out with Him, spend time with Him. Because it really is about relationship. Our Father spending time with His kids, sons and daughters. So let's, let's pray. Let's pray for the nations. And maybe to some of you, what God has been, you know, impressing into your heart is even to go to the nations. Maybe some of you I know, some of you personally, your heart is to go to the nations, like join a short-term 10-day mission. Or not just 10 days, maybe some of you, you want to go long term even, right? I know particular people, uh, you might be at the end, uh, at the other side of that screen right now. And that's what's in your heart. You want to go full, um, full time in the ministry as missionaries going out to the nations. And for us, the rest of us here in Edmonton, you know, God has brought the nations here, right here in this beautiful city. Maybe that's God's word for you for today, to go to the people representing these nations, the people that God brings into your sphere of influence. So pray, go, and some of you uh, whom God didn't call to go into the mission field, to, to plant churches, to to go as uh, campus missionaries, then you can give to the work of God in the nations, in the campuses. So I would like to take this time to encourage you, to those of you, you've been uh, thinking about this, and some of you just received that impression, that in, uh, word to encourage you this morning to partner with those who are out there in the field, campus missionaries, church planters, out in the nations, to partner with them and give to the work of God in the missions. So let's, um, let's wrap this all up in prayer. Father, we thank you. It's not our strategy, it's not our human ability, 
Now, now give us the victory, but it is you, and it's your presence, God. It's you doing the work. We can partner with you. So we come to you in prayer. And I pray that you would send your sons and daughters, send us to go. Now when we look around us, when we see family, we see friends, we see the people, the crowd in our communities, in our campuses, in our workplaces, we'll have the compassion, we'll be compassion towards the people you bring into our spheres of influence. And Lord, would you send us, make us, God, your vessels, anoint our lips so we can start praying, start, Lord, uh, engaging the people around us with the message of the gospel. And I pray, Father God, for faith, Lord, to give into the work. To, to, to that work in, in, in the missions, in the fields. It's like here in Edmonton, God, we, we're able to do what we're doing here in this beautiful city because there are people partnering with us, people from all over, or across continents, supporting us, financing us, giving, donating to the work here in Edmonton. And we are thankful. I pray that you would raise from among us, God. People will step out in faith and give to the word here in Edmonton. Thank you, Father God, for what you're doing right now. Stirring up the spirit of faith, the spirit of gener generosity, God. So we respond, partnering with the work that you're doing because it's not our own ability it's not our wits our experience our strategy but it is you who gives us this city it is you God who gives us victory and thank you for who you are the Lord of the harvest and for this special Sunday we celebrate as Mission Sunday in Jesus name and even as you spend the rest of your weekend and face the one of the warmest maybe warmest week ahead if you're here in Edmonton or even in, in the Middle East it's even hotter there and in the Philippines may the Lord continue to keep you may the Lord bless you and may his face shine upon you May you experience His grace working, tearing down those walls that you need to scale. May you experience Him, you know, doing the work in your behalf and building you up even as He leads you, as you take hold of His promises. May His grace out upon you. May He fill your heart with peace. And that peace that only Him can give. And this is my prayer for you. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. See you later at the park. And have a blessed weekend and a fruitful week ahead.